chapter 26. To the front steps we walk, arm in arm. My family is on the front deck. This is sort of funny, because for the first time I arrived up here, I was so intimidated by the relatives on the deck. In my mind, they were strangers. And now? They're all here, but this time my Minnesota family is mixed in among them. Auntie Ober is on the rocking chair next to my dad. She's leaning over, whispering something to him, and his head is rolling back in laughter. Judy has little Nezzy on her lap and is braiding her hair. Nezzy is singing her newest song from preschool. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I can hear Judy singing along. But of course, when she says S, it comes out like a high-pitched S. Nezzy stops and looks up to her trying to figure out where that whistling sound is coming from, but continues on her song. Am I the only one who thinks Judy's syllabic S is a riot? I know I should respect my elders, but I am who I am. And there on the steps are Junior and Bear debating just who the MVP will be this year. Someone from the Cubs or the Minnesota Twins? Yeah, right. Junior holds out his sausage-sized sausage -sized finger, saying, Pull it. Ugh, boys. Are they always so obsessed with gas? Oh, Lord, Bear is actually going to yank it. Hi, I yell, running through the front yard. Chairs screech as everyone gets up. This time, everyone gets up. Judy and my dad run down the steps first. Why, honey, you've... Oh, Apple, look at you, Dad says. I look down and imagine how I must look to them. They haven't seen me for weeks. Actually, two months and six days, to be exact. The jeans I'm wearing are just plain Levi's, my mom's Levi's. I've got her cowboy boots on, and my hair is growing out. I'm not even done today. Let's just gloss over the issue of my extra 15 pounds I've gained, and the fact that I haven't used a drop of sunscreen since I got here. I must tan as tobacco, Nicorette aside. I know, I know, I must look horrible. At the same time, Dad and Judy gasp. Oh, sweetie, you look beautiful. We all go back inside the house and catch up on this summer. Grandma and Auntie set out quite a spread for dinner. Nezzy is spewing crumbs out of her mouth as she lifts up her offering to Judy and says again, Thanks? bullets. I look at Junior as we see Judy take a second trying to look, trying to make sense of what's going on. We're all feasting as if we hadn't eaten in ages. I think joy makes a person hungry. Mushin is pointing out to Bear which plate has the venison ribs on it and which has the beef spare ribs. Of course, my fearless brother takes a hunk of Bambi and proclaims it awesome. Gross. I prefer the spare ribs and finish off two of them. How would you like to spare ribs, my girl? Mmm, really good, Grandpa. Maybe next time I'll actually try your deer meat. Sure, I will. Well, no time like the present. Oh, no thanks, I don't do deer. Why is everyone smiling? Well, my girl, I may have forgotten to put the spare ribs out this time. He says with a fake innocence. I think I just threw up a little in my mouth. Thumper, flower, please don't hate me. I just ate deer. Haha, <laughs> everyone, laugh at my expense. If I were you all, I'd sleep with one eye open tonight. I can't believe I just ate Bambi. It's the best of times. It's the first best of times I've ever had. The next two days are filled with non-stop talking and laughing, and Judy being freaked out by minor things. Going to the old place to feed Mushin's horses, and she has to use the outhouse. Picking June berries in the bush, and having literally, having to literally comb wood ticks out of her hair. Good times, good times. My dad and I get a rare chance to ride alone on a trip to pick up some supplies. We're going through a lot of food with everyone here, and a lot of toilet paper with my brother Bear here. Don't even ask. The next day, Auntie Ober gets word 
and tells us that Raph is sentenced to 200 hours of community service. I may have shown up to his sentencing hearing and explained a few things. Carl and Raph just looked at me and nodded. So did Carl's wife. I'm still not happy about what Raph did to me, but I need to move on. Junior has a quote he's always saying, any fool who can make you angry has control of your life. Nobody is going to control my life anymore. Only me. That night, we all sleep again at Grandma's. She insists my parents stay in their house. Did you catch that? I called Judy my parent. It has a nice ring to it. Notice, I also don't call it a trailer anymore. Love makes a home, and this one is bursting at the seams with it. Nezzy sleeps on one couch, and I sleep on the other one, so Judy and my dad could take my bedroom, er, my mom's bedroom. Well, the extra bedroom. I tuck Nezzy in after we say prayers. I sort of like her version of bedtime prayer better. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should lie before I take, I pray to Lord my sword to tape. I pull the blankets up and put them under her chin, and I kiss her cheek and I whisper, Good night. Turning and walking back to my couch, I hear her whisper back, Good night you t to you, my girl. Aw, oh, ain't, ain't she sweet? And as I'm drifting between this world and the dream world, I feel someone climb in with me. Nezzy. She whispers again to my ear, Apple, what's with the gold and gate? Hmm? What? I lazily respond, my eyelids heavy with sleep. The gold and gate? What's that, Apple? Hmm? I answer in the haze of slumber. The gold and gate, Apple. What's that? I don't know. Now it's time for bed. You can sleep with me as long as you're quiet. And we both sleep in the deep sleep of peace. I wake up the next morning to mush him, cooking in the kitchen and doing a mighty fine jig. Nezzy must be in there already. I feel something on my forehead and flick it off. I may have a slight bug phobia. When I peek down on the floor, I see what it is. I see it's a tiny plastic turtle, about half an inch long. I notice the window above the couch has been lifted open all right, all night. But Carl wouldn't come around here, would he? Did Raph? Maybe it's Carl's other boys continuing the threats. What does this turtle mean?